Making fantasy picks based on your favorite surfers or maybe who you don't like isn't a great strategy. Believe me, I still do it and it usually doesn't work out. Hey everyone, Old Surf Dad here and in this video I'm going to show you three quick and easy stats that you should check before making your fantasy picks. And guess what? They're hidden in plain sight on worldsurfleague.com. I'm also going to have a bonus data source for improving your picks so stick around to the end to check that out. All right, let's get into it. So stat number one is past results. You see me do a lot of this on my fantasy preview videos. Let me show you how I got here. So let's say the upcoming event is Tahiti, and we wanna look at those past results. From the World Surf League website, you go to Schedule, then you'll see these two boxes, and we're gonna select Men's Championship Tour in the first box. Then the year in this second box. We're going to select 2019 because that was the last time the event ran due to COVID. Now the website defaults into a monthly view, but we'll go here for the full year view and scroll down until we find the Tahiti Pro. Now let's click on that and here we are. The World Surf League has archives of most of the past events for the last 10 years or more. Now let's find results and click on it and scroll down to these boxes that represent each round and we find the quarterfinals. By the way, pro tip, you're gonna to wanna to toggle this switch here so you can see all the scores in each heat. On my fantasy preview videos, I usually only show the semifinals results because I don't want the show to last an hour, but you can easily browse the names of the quarterfinals winners here. I do this just to have in my memory. You could take notes or not take notes but the important thing is to see some of the names and some of the trends. I usually click on the quarters and then the semis and then the finals looking at scores. You may want to look back at other years, but the data is not as strong the further you go back because, for example, Owen Wright is older now and Baramia wasn't even on the tour yet. Still, it's good to see the stats and you'll also find that certain surfers do better at certain events. Think. Courtney at Bells, or John John at Margaret River, or Kelly at Pipe. To look at earlier years, you just repeat the process and pick the previous years. I wish there was a link for each subsequent year, but unfortunately for now, you have to start a new search. Now, I know some of you are saying, but old surf dad, what if the event is new, like El Salvador? Or what if they haven't been there in forever, like g -Land, and there's no numbers? Well, that's what these next two stats are for. Let's go check them out. All right, stat number two is to go to rankings and see who's trending. Let's take a look. Again, starting at the World Surf League homepage, we click rankings and then we'll click on women's rankings. Let's see who's trending based on the last event, which at the time I made this video was Bells Beach in 2022. Here you can peruse down the rankings and see who's trending up in green and see who's falling down the rankings in red. We see Tyler Wright's win has her up five points in the rankings and we see Steph and Courtney jumped up in rank five and seven slots, respectively. Does this mean they found a groove, or did someone have a lucky run? You get to decide. The other wrinkle to this is the approaching cut line. Surfers are fighting for their careers. Who is more likely to use a recent downturn as motivation? Who will perform and make the cut? This is where you get to determine your best picks based on these trends and how you interpret them. Now you can go over and look at the men's simply by clicking here. The first thing that stands out is how Callum Robson has rocketed up nine spots after his runner-up finish at Bells. This shows the importance of those finals results. You can see the points broken down by event here. 10,000 is a win and 7,800 is runner-up. In fact, looking at the top five, everyone has had finals results except John John, who has had solid, consistent results each event. You can see Felipe at the number one spot has both consistent results and a win and runner-up finish. He dominates with a huge points lead. The anomaly is Griffin Colapinto, who won in Portugal and received 10,000 points and then hasn't made it out of the round of 32 for any of the other events. This is why he's famous for the Colapinto curse and their survival league, taking out more survivalists than any other surfer. If you hover over a surfer's portrait, you can see more information about them, including their rank, heat wins, and average heat score. 
This is what we're going to get into next, and I'll show you the most important stat of all. And stat number three, it's built right into the Fantasy Picks page. Let's have a look. From the World Surf League homepage, we go to the Fantasy page, just like when we pick our team, and click My Team. We're going to the Tier A Men's Picks for Margaret River, where we find these categories you may have overlooked. These are all great numbers to know, but I want to focus on Heat Win Percentage. This is probably the most important stat for fantasy selection, as this shows a surfer's pure performance number for the current season. Looking down the list, we see the numbers telling the story. Felipe is winning almost 80% of his heats in 2022, and Kanoa and John John are close behind at 70%. And then there's Kelly, whose heat win percentage is around 40% this year, having not performed well since Pipe. The number helps you make picks with your head rather than your heart. I mean, I always want to have that Kelly magic on my team, but the stats are telling me I can do better. Now here's another layer. You can select this toggle switch and get past results for this event, which happens to be Margaret River, rather than the default selection of the current season, which happens to be 2022. This helps to identify surfers that dominate a particular location. And here's John John's incredible numbers at Margaret River. An average heat score of 16.03, a stunning heat win percentage at more than 85%, and 33 excellent waves. Unbelievable. Now, Callum Robson's win percentage is 100% only because this is his first event, and at the time of this recording, he had won his only heat. So that number is skewed and will come down to earth once he has some history here. By the way, John's numbers are based on eight events. Again, amazing numbers. Next, this stat really comes in handy when you have rookies with limited pass results on tour to determine how they are doing against the veterans. Here's Jackson Baker with a 63% heat win percentage, which is better than everyone else in Tier B, including Jack Robinson, Jordy Smith, and Kolohe and Dino. Using these stats that are literally right in front of you when you make your picks can help with your selections and build a better fantasy team. It's helped me, and I hope it helps you too. Now wait, there's one more thing. And that bonus data source for improving your picks? Well, that would be the Australian odds makers. Let me show you how you can get that information. So you can go directly to the Australian TAB and look up the odds on your own, but you'll need a VPN to access the site. If you don't have one or don't know what I'm talking about, just go to oldsurfdad.com and scroll down to the bottom where you'll see the green TAB logo and click on it. Here you'll find the latest odds. In my 2022 Bells Beach preview video, I explained how the odds worked and how to use them. Let's check it out. In Australia, it's as easy to bet on Mick Fanning to win Bells as it is here in the U.S. to walk into a 7-Eleven and buy a lottery ticket. Now, I'm not endorsing gambling. In fact, quite the opposite. I think you should save your money for mutual funds and surf trips, probably in that order. However, there's a lot of information we can get from these numbers. Let's see who the Australian odds makers think will win the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. So the favorite is John John, who is currently 5-1. to one. No surprise there, having won the last Bells event in 2019. He is followed by Felipe, Italo, and Mick Fanning, all at the same odds. Jordi is in fifth with slightly lower odds. So how does this work, and what does the $5 mean next to John John's name? It's pretty simple, actually. If you put $100 on John John, you would get $500 back, hence the $5. Mick is currently 8 to 1, and I'm surprised Mick is pulling those odds, which are the same for Felipe and Idolo. Now remember, this is in Australia, and I think there'd be a lot of money on Mick. The bookie, in this instance, Australia's TAB, will change the odds in order to equally distribute money on different surfers so they can take their commission and avoid a heavy loss on any one competitor. In other words, the whole thing is skewed. Now, even though these numbers aren't real odds, but the perception of odds, they do have merit. Check out Zeke Lau, who is currently $34. And then you have Jadson at the bottom of the list at $251, which is the same odds of Leon O'Brien winning, and he's got a broken leg. You can see the full list of surfers and their odds on my website at oldsurfdad.com if you want to check it out. I will keep an archive of these odds here on the site 
and later see how accurate they are over the long term. But I can tell you the casino wants to make money and they do a decent job of setting these lines. Use them to your advantage, but save your money for a serve board. If you want more fantasy strategies, check out the video over there. And if you got something out of this, please give it a like. It really helps the channel. Feel free to subscribe and join us. And good luck with your fantasy team. And thanks for watching.